now you 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 go alex you tell us who who trump is going to put in his cabinet because a lot of viewers are going to be absolutely on on tent hooks about this and they're going to they're going to they want your view well it's i mean it's it's important because you know i think that trump has always been very influenced by the people around him um you had i mean he bombed syria after he was shown a video he stopped the war in syria after he was shown a video you know um so he's very and there's cause there's cause to be optimistic uh there's he put out on truth social trump says haley and pompeo won't join his administration so that's two neocons off the list it Wait. doesn't get better from there um so we have brian hook who uh was appointed by george w bush and this is via drop site news the kind of offshoot of piero Midiar's intercept this is from maz hussein uh trump is eyeing iran hawk hawk brian hook as first fo foreign policy pick Brian Hook, a hawkish fixture in the first Donald Trump administration who formerly served under George W. Bush, is reportedly getting the call to start staffing the State Department for a new Trump term. Hook, known as a major Iran hawk who helped lead the maximum pressure campaign of sanctions, sabotage, and assassinations that characterized Trump's approach to Tehran, has been appointed to help oversee the formation of a new foreign policy team, according to reports from Politico and CNN. So this guy was the point man on Iran during the assassination of uh Qasem Soleimani and not only that but uh you know oversaw the uh maximum pressure sanctions regime um there's also this story in the Miami Herald Marco Rubio at the center of a quiet race for secretary of state so i want to go over some of the guys that are listed here Rubio has made it known to Trump and his inner circle that he is interested in joining the president-elect's cabinet, sources say, adding that Secretary of State is perhaps the most natural fit for the senator. One person close to Trump noted the process is still playing out and that this newly named White House Chief of Staff, Suvi Wiles, a veteran of Florida Re Republican or operative, will likely play a crucial role in filling out cabinet appointments. The position is highly competitive with other top allies of the former and future president, including former U.S. Ambassador to Germany Rick Grinnell, former National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, Republican Senator Bill Haggerty of Tennessee, jostling for the role. So who are those people? Well, everyone knows who Rubio is, but one thing I'd like to point out about Rubio's record, this is, uh, well, I have the wrong link, so I'm just going to read it from the notes here. In 2023, Senator Tim Kaine, that was uh, Hillary Clinton's running mate, and Marco Rubio authored legislation requiring that any presidential decision to exit NATO must have either two-thirds Senate approval or be authorized through an act of Congress. Lawmakers passed the measure as part of the, of the fiscal 2024 National Defense Authorization Act, which President Joe Biden signed into law. So, in short, the one of the main contenders for the next Secretary of State spent last year trying to tie Trump's hands in the event that he might want to leave NATO. So why he would consider him now is anyone's question, but it certainly speaks to the, um, you know, there's this longstanding tradition of Republicans getting behind Russiagate, of getting behind thwarting Trump at all turns, only to show up as uh, future appointees and best mm -hmm. friends. Um, another person, person mentioned here is former ambassador to Germany, Rick Grinnell. Grinnell, some of our viewers may remember was the in charge of brokering the deal that secured the arrest of Julian Assange, uh, Cassandra Fairbanks, uh, journalist with um, on Tim Pool's team, also for Real Clear Politics, many other places, uh, published recordings of her talking with Grinnell's staff, where it was admitted that Grinnell was the one who brokered the deal and was staunchly politically opposed to Julian Assange. This was used by Assange's lawyers uh, in court, the political comments that were made to show yeah. that it was not a criminal <clears throat> prosecution, but a political cr prosecution. Another person mentioned in the article as in the running for the Secretary of State is uh, Senator Bill Haggerty. I got the wrong link right here. 
I don't know what happened to my links. Anyways, uh, this is a guy, this is the kind of Republican who is still talking about the threats to national security being Sharia law, uh, being mm -hmm. the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. And I have this here from his Senate campaign. Bill's blueprint to stand with Israel. And there's some key points here, which I'll go over. Standing with President Trump in reaffirming our historic commitment to Israel, aligning ourselves against Israel's enemies, showing Tehran the U.S. does not tolerate their attempts to bully our allies, pushing for a permanent nuclear deal that ensures Iran has, never has a nuclear weapon, maintaining continued foreign assistance to Israel, supporting peace negotiations, and stern, standing firm against the BDS movement. So it goes into greater detail on all this but again one of the the kind of republican that is is talking seriously in the year 2024 about sharia law and its threats to the united states um and and you know america's unwavering support for israel if you go to his issues page on his website i had the link but it's, it's gone now uh you can see that standing up to communist china is another uh pillar of his foreign policy. Again, this is a guy in the running for the Secretary of State. And in that, he talks about the need to, def to defend markets. So, I mean, you, you can pretty easily get a picture of um, the kind of guy he is. There's also Robert O'Brien in the running for Secretary of State. O'Brien was a, like Brian Hook, who is uh, putting together the foreign policy team, uh, you know, appointed by George W. Bush, uh, while Brian Hook worked on... Uh, on um, Iran, uh, uh, Robert O'Brien worked on the um, on the uh, nation building in Afghanistan, and so, oh, what happened to all my links, man? Here we go. So this is from his State Department bio. O'Brien previously served as co-chair of the U.S. State Department's public-private partnership for justice reform in Afghanistan under both Secretaries Clinton. And Secretary Rice. I'm sorry, I'm dealing with a cat here. Um, hey, Oliver. Secretaries Clinton and How's Secretaries it? Rice. The PPRJRA uh, promoted the rule of law by training Afghan judges, prosecutors, and defense lawyers and provided scholarships for young Afghan lawyers to study in the U.S. So, I mean, both him and, and uh, Hook got their start under George Bush, worked on Mitt Romney's campaign. Um, Robert O'Brien has comments here in The Economist, which I'm pulling up now. Uh, here we go. It's clear that Vladimir Putin just doesn't like Hillary Clinton and is going to do what he can to help Donald Trump. This is, again, a man being considered for the role of Secretary of State. So all of the people that are being considered reportedly being considered in the running for the secretary of state position are swamp creatures. I mean, we have Pompeo and Haley ruled out, but we also have the guy who led the campaign to arrest Julian Assange. We have Marco Rubio who tried to handcuff president Trump previously by forbidding him from unilaterally leaving NATO. Bill Haggerty, just a, you know, died in the woods, uh, in the wool, uh, anti-China, pro-Israel hawk, you know. Um, so it's not looking too good right now, in my view. No. Um, and this is no. kind of what I've been trying to warn about over the course of the campaign. And again, you know, uh, who, do, who do you want to lead the Death Star, Darth Vader or Jar Jar Binks? Um, if the goal is to take out the Death Star, I would say Jar Jar Binks. But uh, I, I, what, what, what do you think about all this? Yeah, I mean, th this is the thing is, I mean, as I'm sure we'll get into it, like it, 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 he has conned on some awful, awful, awful people as part of his transition team. A, they don't always end up um, in government. I think most of um, Trump's transition team didn't. Uh, last time round, and, and the same with Biden, but um, but also as well, it, I, I mean, uh, like it, it, it's kind of unsurprising because actually, what's been somewhat missed in all of the cuddly rhetoric emanating from the Democrats over the past four four years 
is that actually like most of the US foreign policy infrastructure and foreign policy debate is just completely batshit insane. Like so, it, it, the, the, like actually, in terms of anyone dovish, um, like no one, you know, like like like, yeah. like at all, at all. And I I remember so well. Um, I I, I used to watch um, U.S. presidential um, the, the kind of the, the Democratic and the the Republican primaries when I was when I was a political reporter because I just I was at my, and a bit of a nerd for this stuff. Like I would watch the Republican primaries in like 2016. And like they were all trying, all of the candidates would be trying to outdo each other on key issues. And it would yeah. be like, well, like, I mean, what would you do about Iran's nuclear deal? Well, the first person to answer would be like, right, well, I would give them 24 hours upon taking office to uh, walk away peacefully from the deal um, or, or I'd declare war. And then it's just like the next speaker is like, what coward? I would have launched missiles. And it just and it just and just ramping up like, like the base level is like this insane hawkishness. And the Biden administration has been insanely hawkish. Yeah. And, and to a to a to a degree, which is actually in terms of like what they're sending to Ukraine. Um, I mean, we've discussed this on the show before, like the the the, the, U, the, the, the Pentagon is like running dangerously low of its stockpiles on everything, which are going to take years to rebuild in order to maintain the proxy war in Ukraine. But they're, or they're, they're, as we've discussed again, um, that there, there, there is a hesitancy to go all out in this, but they are still giving Ukraine enormous amounts of 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 weapons ammunition and material which they cannot sustain but it's yeah. this insanely belligerent and and um uh a, a dangerous uh move for a, a commander in chief to make you know um and that's not really being talked about um at all yeah but i mean at the same time this has been a campaign about America first. And yes. I, I got this, I got this link that I lost in the notes. Uh, oh. Bill Haggerty's issues page, protecting our national security. Look how it ends. Uh, Bill believes we must stand firm against Sharia law in our country and across the globe because it can be the foundation for radical Islam and terrorism. He's committed to working with our allies. So this is about, he stands with Israel under the protecting our national security page. Next section, standing with Israel, because the first <laughs> one wasn't enough. I mean, Bill is pushing for a permanent nuclear deal that ensures Iran never has nuclear weapons, and he has supported continued foreign assistance to Israel. Standing up to communist China, uh, you know, Bill, Bill continues to support the efforts of standing up to China and its threats. He stands with the people of Hong Kong, and he continues to speak out on on behalf of oppressed people in China who have their religious freedom, their freedom of expression, and their rights trampled by a Marxist regime. Uh, as Tennessee's senator, Bill continues to stand up to China to protect markets and democracy. So this is not the kind of language you would want to be hearing from uh, an America first secretary of state. Mm. Um, Israel but that's, I mean, this is, this is, and, and again, you know, I've gone over the, I, had the list from the Miami Herald of all the people in the running for the secretary of state position. And every single one of them is a swamp creature. None of them are America yeah. first. That's very, very worrying. Yes. Yes. No disagreements at all. But it's also, as I say, a reflection of where America is um, in foreign policy terms. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.